come on in. Uh, I am getting logged on on Instagram. It takes me a little bit longer to always get logged on to YouTube, so I always do that first. But y'all come on in. We have a couple of more seconds, maybe like a minute here, and then we are going to get started. I love this topic, y'all. We are calling this garden planning. This is this is something to think about, whether you have started a garden, whether you're expanding a garden, whether you are extending your garden, like what I'm thinking about. I want y'all to think about some of the things that we're going to talk about today. This is going to be good. So happy Monday, y'all. Happy Monday, happy Monday. Hello, Angela. How are you? Working, but yeah, I'm on my lunch break today. Um, I'm on my lunch break now, so I will not be long, I promise you. And thank you so much for um, joining us and just for your support. Hello, hello, Shirley. How are you? So I won't be long, y'all, because I'm on my I'm on my lunch break. But I wanted to um, kind of talk about this as we are going into the spring season. So let me. Let me get set up here because um, the devil tried to get loose. And I don't know for all of you that know the hymns of, I told him to get behind me because victory is mine today. Okay. So I don't know if y'all know that hymn or not, <laughs> but he tried to get loose, but we're not letting that happen. Today is too beautiful of a day. We are a few days into spring, a few days into spring. And for all of you that are joining us, both on Instagram and YouTube, let me tell y'all, happy Monday, y'all. Let me tell you, I am so thankful. I'm thankful, but I'm sad. I'm thankful because all of our seeds, not all of our seeds, but the two most popular seeds sold out. When I put up the butterfly pea flower seeds, they sold out within an hour and 30 minutes. What I felt bad about is because I had a lot of DMs. I had people... Um, emailing and just asking where they're going to be back in stock. So uh, I'm, I have to get through filling the orders up. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Do a post office run and just come back and check the inventory. I know I got some more Rizal seeds that are left over, but I'm not sure. But again, if you're not on our text list, make sure you text the word let's grow to 474747. Um, and get on our email list as well. All my YouTube land, I will make sure after the video has rendered, I'll make sure that I put everything in the description. But I just want to thank each and every one of you because I was not expecting for the seeds to sell out like that. You know, I just, I knew a few people had wanted um, to buy them and I was um, telling them I wanted to test the germination, but I didn't realize that many people really love the butterfly pea flower seeds. So again, I'm on my lunch break, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I won't talk very long. Let's first go ahead and get a couple of housekeeping things out of the way. So if you're new, hello and welcome. My name is Ayana of Southern Entertaining. We're teaching people to stop imagining about a garden and to create one. We're, I'm going to take you along my garden journey as we continue to go through. And so I want you, I just want to encourage you to grow. You don't have a brown thumb. You don't have a black thumb. You can grow. You can grow it. You could do it. We all have to change our mindset. And that's the first thing I tell people when they first want to start. First, change your mindset. Don't say you can't because you can. You can do, like I tell my kids, you can do whatever you want to as long as you put your mind to it. And um, so that is what we are here to do. And I'm always here if you have any questions about anything if i don't know the answer then i will try to find it out so um also if you are new and you're thinking about gardening or you know someone who has mentioned the word grow or something like that make sure you like and share this video and let them know um that what our initiative is just trying to get everybody to grow and then if you're not on our text message list and you want to be notified when we go live 
when we have specials, uh, when we just put out different things throughout the week, make sure you text the word Let's Grow, L E T S G R O W, to 474747. Again, text the word Let's Grow to 474747. Happy Monday, Smart Home Canon. How are you? And um, also, download our five tips to a flourishing garden. I'm telling y'all, every now and then, I have to go back to the basics um, and sit down and just look over things. So, we have a free ebook, Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden. It's going to tell you everything you need to know to get started because we don't want you to feel frustrated, especially if you're new to gardening. Um, we want you to just enjoy the process. I'm telling y'all, gardening to me is really therapy. I want to get out here right now, but I'm on my lunch break because I'm telling you, it's been a, it's been a very eventful morning, okay? So let's talk about, I, I kind of call this garden planning or gardening 101 because once you are able to answer these questions and i want this live to be a little bit interactive today so i'm going to ask y'all some questions and i want you to put it in the chat because once i ask you these questions i think whether you're new whether you're expanding whether you are not sure what you want to plant this this year or this season i think once you answer these questions this will kind of get you on the right track to thinking about your garden style. So what we want to talk about today is your what is your garden style and what is your purpose for gardening? I always ask people this because this is going to help you to first of all pick plants to grow. So let's go back and let's talk about what is your garden style. Like, are you, and this is where I want y'all to type it in the chat. Are you like a whimsy gardener? Um, are you more wanting structure? Are you like a structural gardener? Are you a conservative gardener? And what I'll do is I'll, let me give you an example so you can understand what I mean. So when I say a whimsy garden, you see like lots of, to me what it means is I see like lots of color in the garden. Um, I see a lot of people, even like with the patio containers, where they have those beautiful, vibrant summer colors, beautiful plants. Um, and then, like if they have a bigger garden, they have like different garden um, decor in their garden. You know, whether it be like the gnomes or the different things like that. So, that's what I think about when I think about whimsy. A stru structural is where you know you want things to be nice and manicured very neat um and kind of like things are in its place and then you just have like the conservative and when i think about the conservatives is when i go into like the older neighborhoods you know how they have like the different um you know one color pot you know maybe like two black pots sitting on the side of the door and then um just everything is just really conservative. Not, not a lot of color when it comes to pots and just, you know, everything is like kind of when you go to some of the different, visit some of the different gardens like that. So type in the chat, what type of gardener are you? Are you more of a whimsy gardener? You like color, you like different plants with colors. Are you more conservative or are you more like structural? I think me personally, I am, I'm in between like structure, like I want stuff to look a certain way and be manicured and a little bit conservative. I am trying to get out of that. Like I bought some red pots last year. They were on clearance, but I'm like, I bought some red pots. And that to me is really going outside the box because most of my pots are black or brown. Um, but hey, it was on clearance and I'm like, you know what? You can make that look good. And it's no right or wrong answer. All I've looked at so many beautiful gardens, especially whimsy. And I wish that I could do that as well. And then also like with the structures, if you've been following us along on our gardening journey, you notice that we have like two, uh, pergolas up and then like a structural little girl. We call her the, uh, I think the structure of the flower of 
good and eaten. And then we have like one pineapple structure. So I don't have like a lot of garden decor. I think I do have like a little bunny or something like that. I don't have a lot of garden decor. So that's why I say I'm in between structured and conservative, but I'm trying to break outside of the box because of before everything happened, I would at least twice a year go visit some type of botanical garden or some type of garden. And it was the way they put things up. It was so beautiful. They just made things look so beautiful and you can go and get ideas. Okay. So you are structurally manicured for me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> me too. Uh, I've learned how to do the comments. Everything has a place. Yes, yes. And and with the decor, decors are really pretty, but it just, it has, you know how when you go in the store, like something has to speak to me for me to get it. So that's what I mean about that. So once you, once you find out your style with gardening, that will help you a lot in the garden. Now, let me give you another tip that is going to, yes, I'm more structural trellises, right. I, <laughs> Right. It's just, I don't know. Um, I don't want to sound crazy, but sometimes I get nervous when thinking. Now, if y'all were to look at the back of this patio now with all these seedlings and stuff, you'd be like, there's no way you structural. But when I come out here, I get slightly nervous, slightly anxiety. I'm like, I got to do something about this because I can't keep watching it. So a garden and mug says, I do love garden decor, brings extra color, texture, and winter interest to the garden. So yes, 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 yes. So let me give you another element that will help you when it comes to garden planning. So whether you've already, whether you're already gardening or whether you're thinking about it or you're just starting, I want y'all to think about this because just like everybody has like their own, even when it comes to clothes, like their own style of gardening. When it comes to gardening, this is what I want y'all to think about. And this is going to help you really decide what you want to plant in your garden. It has helped me. So that's why I want to share this with y'all. So when you garden, what's the purpose? Like y'all type in the comments, why are you even gardening? And this is what I mean. I'll give you some examples. Are you gardening to attract like wildlife or pollinators in the garden? Are you um, gardening as a place to relax? Like you want to go out to the garden, have a space and relax. This is why I garden. This is perfect for me. I want to create a space to entertain for family and friends. That's where Southern Entertaining came from. Like I want to grow, but then I also want to have my family and friends come around and we just, you know, chat and laugh and listen to music and get fresh stuff out the garden, take a few flowers, cut those up, put them in vases. So do you garden because of that? Do you garden for a safe place for your children? Do you garden so that you can teach your kids um, about gardening, where, foods, where food comes from? Like it's so many reasons and then one of the other reasons, so I actually have two. Another reason why I garden is to be able to pr produce food that can feed my family. If y'all saw my stories on uh, Instagram this morning, like I literally came out, harvested two stalks of celery to put in my smoothie. So I use that as a way to like help with the groceries, but also um, just be able to be feeding my family and feel like that that just gives me joy inside knowing that I can come out here and pull and pick some things and it is a journey I'm not saying that you know I can come out here and make a meal every day but there are times like this morning I can pull celery or I can pull some radish slice those thin and add with my lettuce and make a, a flour so or and make a, a salad so when you know why you garden, that is going to also let you know what, what uh, plants, for me, like what plants to grow because I know my purpose of gardening. And then this is what I also want you to think about too. So if you're just joining us, we're talking about the your style of gardening and what's the purpose. Why do you garden? And then also think about when you're doing all of this, how much time do you have to do this? Like you are, I think when you start 
thinking about those things, this is going to help you just really drill down on how you want your garden set up why you're doing it and then also what plants to put in your garden and the reason why i say that is i garden to and i'll give you an example i garden to feed my family and to entertain family and friends but you will never probably see me grow a cauliflower because nobody eats it that i know of and i don't really like cauliflower so if you are gardening to um show your kids where fresh fruit comes from. You know, you may choose this season to plant tomatoes or to plant, um, or to plant, you know, like a cucumber and let them taste the freshness. So that is what I want you to get to thinking about because that's gonna help you know what to grow in your garden and then dealing with how much time you have. Like, do you, or do you stay at home? So you may have more time than like what I do because we have to work and then th I'm so thankful that the light is here. You know, it stays later a little bit longer, but I have to be like, you know, say Saturday when you've seen our stories today, I'm going to weed out the garlic bed. And then like today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to plant my lemongrass, different things like that. So let me go through the comments because you all put some good things in the comments. Let's start on um, Instagram first about what type of gardener you are and why do you garden? And then how much time do, do you have to devote to gardening? Okay, I'm making little signs, stuff that I found out the, at the Dollar Tree, Feathered Sunset, exactly. So it sounds to me like you are like the whimsy gardener. And those are, like I have seen some that are just so pretty and so full of color. So that is the type of gardener as a sanctuary, a garden in a mug says she um, she gardens as a sanctuary, exactly, place of relaxation, beautify the property. That's a good one. Beautify the property, place to entertain and enjoy family, place to grow food, place to draw neighbors over to share knowledge. Yes, 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 yes. And then the rustic, the, yes, I love the longer days. So now let's go over to YouTube really quick and let's look at some of the... Um, reasons why people garden angela likes yep food i like to eat living in the desert love adding color where i can with flowers that is awesome that's amazing i love growing vegetables and flowers because i love making flower arrangements they last so much longer and some of the flowers smell so much good and if you haven't considered growing vegetables with, with flowers i highly encourage that because you will notice an increase in pollinators, especially with some of the pollinator friendly um, plants that we have. I garden because I like to watch things grow and flourish and the reward of eating my own vegetables. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm telling y'all, once you start eating your own vegetables and they're out of season, you just you just be so sad. You know, <laughs> I'm just I'm so ready for tomatoes. I don't know what to do. Tomatoes and basil. That is what I am ready for to see and eat unique things. Exactly, UT33200. Let me tell y'all, if y'all don't follow UT33200 on YouTube, please go follow his channel because I love watching him and his fam uh, family, Angel and Kiddo, because they grow some of the most amazing peppers, tomatoes, they grow things. They have started, they had me looking for like things that you don't find at the grocery store like seriously things you don't find at the produce they grow it and then i love that they come in and then they will give their honest opinion of what it tastes like how it tastes um i've seen tomatoes that they've grown that i have never saw before so make sure you go and follow them gardening has been my therapy and a place to show my kids and grandkids how to eat healthy that is so important to me and that and and i totally agree with you i garden because it really does feed the soul yes the scent of the flowers and the colors that make me feel peaceful and attract butterflies peppers <laughs> peppers for the freezers okay and i'll answer your question in just a second so we have some veggie and flower gardeners over here. Have a big garden when we are in Georgia full time. Yes, yes, I definitely want a market garden and I wanna invite all of y'all to it to just like go out there and just pick what you want. 
Vegetables will be my focus this year, adding flowers for pollinators where I wear a bee suit to be out there. <laughs> You're like my sister. My sister sometimes watches me on live, and I told y'all we have carpenter bees that they, I guess they come out early, and she sent me a message and said, I know you saw that bee, and I'm like, yeah, I did. I don't, I don't really, unless they just like, you know, come at me, I just let them do what they want to do because I need them around to pollinate, uh, definitely pollinate some of my uh, flowers here. So I just want to answer your questions really quick. Hello to all of y'all who have just joined. What flowers do you grow to cut? Um, I, we grow roses, uh, zinnias. We have dahlias that we grow. I don't want to miss any. Come on now. I'm going to have to go through some of my uh, pictures on on my phone because I know I'm missing some. I'm looking at my roses. That's why I know I do that. I know I do the dahlias. We started dahlias from seed this year. I'm really happy with that. And then I know I always grow like zinnia. We have some anemones um, that are coming up. We have ranunculus that are coming up. Um, we have... I use Dusty Miller as a filler. Um, we grow, we love growing the lemon basil. Is it lemon, Mrs. Byrne lemon basil? Because that makes a good filler and it really, really smells good. And I know I'm missing some, but I'm going to go back. I know that zinnias are one of my favorites to grow. Oh, sunflowers as well. And all of those, they love, they love, love, love. Um, they love like... Um, those are pollinator friendly. The marigold that I grew last year, those had bees all over it. And, and if you just plant like one or two by your vegetables, I'm telling you, you will see a difference. Not only bees, but just other beneficial pollinators as well. So they come at me. Yeah. <laughs> Once you start fighting the bees, they're, <laughs> they're going to think you're after them. And that's when it, that's when it gets bad. That's when you can get stung. So I just kind of, you know, I just kind of walk away and like talk to them. Like, don't, don't come at me today. Cause I'm not bothering you. If I'm not bothering you, don't bother me. Okay. So we have Sir Justin Bowen. He loves sunflowers. Yes. Sunflowers. Um, I don't think you can pre prevent the birds. How do you prevent the bird? You just got to get out there before they do because they are coming. I, um, and watching a squirrel that is going in my garden because the strawberries are starting to form and I just saw birds the other day so I know I'm gonna have to get out there and put some bird netting over them but the sunflowers when I grew them it was just you just got to get out there before they do because ours were some of them grew tall like five and six feet so uh, I save a little bit for the birds. I don't mind sharing with the pollinators and the birds. The only thing I had a problem with the birds last year is with my tomatoes and our berries. And I'm like, look, I don't mind sharing. Just don't be wasteful. Just don't peck in one and then go to another and just keep pecking in them. That's what they were doing. They And they were good and juicy as well, um, too. The seedlings, when you plant, what I do when I plant my seedlings, if they're really small, I will cover them until I think they're big enough um, so that they, they don't come. So a lot of times when we put out like even leafy greens, even like the calendula that we're growing before, um, once I plant them out in the ground, I have like a cover. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of made out of mesh, mesh, so it stops the insects as well. And so we take those um, wire racks and then we just kind of cover until I think that they're big enough. And that'll kind of protect your seeds, you know, from the insects as well as the birds. But if they're flowering or pollinator, you know, once they start getting those blooms, you have to take them off so that they can be pollinated. But a lot of my plants, when I start them and put them in the raised beds and the grounds, I'll just cover them for a few weeks um, until they get big enough. That's a great question great question so for all of y'all um that are joining lemon time is good i actually my lemon time actually came back this year and i didn't think it would and I'm, it does smell so good lemon time is very good to grow as well and you can a lot of herbs i'll grow but i'll put in my cut flowers because when you bring them in it makes them smell like really good that mrs burns lemon basil that is a good one. I mean, people also use it and cook with it and make pesto with it, but I grow it particularly for um, 
adding into the different flower arrangements. So for all of y'all that are just coming in, thank you so much for uh, coming. But I just wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit today about planning your garden and then how knowing your garden style, the purpose of why you're gardening, how that's going to help you over the growing season, how that's going to help you like pick what plants to grow. So let's recap because I don't want to keep y'all very long, but um, garden for me is a stress release. Yes, it is. I'm telling you, I can sit out here all day. The only reason why y'all see me standing up right now is because it's so much pollen on my patio chairs. Like I have to get out here with a soap, water, and my uh, hose and really wipe everything down because I know if I sit down and put my arms on that rest and then you know how we're always prone to put it in my face it, that's it that's it it's over it's over so i have to get out here and clean my patio furniture so you'll probably see me standing up until i move plants and go ahead and do that but for those who, of you who are just joining i just want you over the garden season to think about it so i'm going to recap really quick first determine your garden style are you a whimsy gardener? You Are you more conservative? Are you more on the structural type? Because that is going to help you um, kind of plan your garden and the way you want it to look. Because uh, this is what I tell people. I love to see all types of garden, but I know, like, you know, I'll give you an example. My kids are like, do you like this? And I tell them, if you like it, I love it because you're the one that's going to have to look at it every day, not me. So you have to do... You have to do what you are happy looking at every day. So it doesn't matter what type of gardener you are, but that will help you as far as adding structure and how you want it. Like I've seen somebody's garden, they're on Instagram. I'm going to think of the name, Finch and Folly. Allison, she is such a sweet person. Her garden, she is really like a whimsy gardener, but it is so beautiful and so full of color. And like she has the flag up there. Like it's it's very, very pretty. So if you don't follow her at Finch and Folly, go look at her Instagram page because her garden is so beautiful. And I DM'd her the other day. Like every year I look forward to following her through her gardening journey as well. So after you determine what style your garden is, next determine why are you really gardening? What is your purpose? Our purpose we love to grow food to feed our family and then we also like to entertain family and friends. So if you're gardening, find out your reason and your reason is going to help you select plants to put in your garden. If you love fresh flowers and you are tired of buying the grocery store flowers, grow two to three flowers and you will not have to spend a dime during that growing season. It can save you so much money just by mixing a few of your favorite flowers, taking them inside. We had so many flowers. I was putting flower flower um, vases in the bathroom when you first come in, in the kitchen, and, and they keep so much longer and they smell so good. So if that's the purpose that you're growing, then that's gonna help you determine what flowers that you need to, to pick. Are you doing it to create a, um, are you wanna create a uh, garden for wildlife or to bring in pollinators? So that will help you determine, okay, let me plant some plants that are pollinator friendly. So, so do y'all understand like how you can kind of plan your garden over the season just by asking yourself, you know, what's my garden style? What uh, why am I doing this? And then how much space do I have? Because you have to think about that as well. And how much time do I have to devote to this garden? And the rustic dove just made a good point. Pinterest is a great place to look up different garden styles. It's an awesome place. I love going on Pinterest. Sometimes that's another thing. Sometimes I get lost on Pinterest and Instagram and I have to, I have to set a timer to get myself off there. But that is another good point. So if you know your garden style, go on there and get some ideas, like get some inspiration. And then it's a whole bunch of YouTubers and it's a whole bunch of, you know, Instagram and Pinterest gardeners that it's just, 
they can give you a lot of ideas. I know that I have gotten several ideas and used in my garden based on my garden style. And that is definitely gonna help you. It's gonna help you with your plants, what you need to plant. If you wanna have a garden that just smells all the time, right now I am looking at five lavender plants <laughs> that I don't need, but I got because I love to run my hand through them. And just, I can't wait till they start blooming so I can cut them and take them inside and dry them. I'm almost done with lavender. You know, maybe you wanna grow lavender and make some um, sachets with it or use it uh, to do that under the pillow, put it in tea, put it in bacon. So figure out what is the purpose? Why do you even wanna garden? And that's gonna help you select all the plants that you need to grow. So, it's 1230. I'm not going to keep y'all long. So let me just go through, make sure I didn't miss any comments um, through here. And we are going to end it. And thank you all for uh, being interactive and telling me what was your gardening style and why, and why you garden. All of these were very good reasons as to why we all garden. We all have our channel. Okay, UT 33200 is their channel. And I'm telling y'all, I think it was, I don't know, I'm not going to say it was a blue tomato, but they grow some very different produce that you will never see in your garden. And they grow lots of it. They grow a whole bunch of it. But what I love about them is they get on there and they tell you like if the flavor of the tomato wasn't too good or, you know, they give their honest opinion. So I like following them. And I think I got everybody else. So again, thank you for being interactive. Okay, so that was it. So again, if you want to be notified when we're going live, make sure you take let, Let's Grow to 47, 47, 47. Again, thank you all. Thank you, thank you so much for the purchase of the seeds. I will get them out. I'm, I went to the post office yesterday and did like a drop run, but we're going to finish getting the rest out between today and tomorrow. And for those of you who have sent me a message, if they, if I do have some more, I'll make sure that I reach out to you because I did not expect that. So, um, we will be on again. Remember our new times for our lives are Monday at 12, p 12 noon Eastern standard time. And then Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if it's anything you want to discuss, anything you want to talk about, make sure you contact me and we can chat and talk about it on our lives. And until Friday, you all have a safe and productive week and I will see you again soon. Bye y'all. Y'all take care.